I think judicial independence has uh, at least two components to it. Um, one is decisional independence, and the other is institutional uh, independence, institutional autonomy. Decisional independence um, refers to uh, what judges should be able to do, and that is to render decisions according to the law as they see it without fear of retribution. In other words, the ability to call it as they see it grounded in, in, in the law uh, and uh, without fear of, 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 of po political uh, blowback. So I think that that's a very important part of, uh, of decisional uh, independence. Uh, the other part of uh, judicial independence is uh, autonomy as an institution. In other words, having the resources that are necessary for the branch of government, the judiciary, to do its job. And um, that means having adequate budgets, adequate appropriations, adequate uh, security, um, ensuring that the courthouses are uh, welcoming places and places that are open for uh, business. Uh, we saw in, in, in uh, in recent months when there was a threat of a government shutdown affecting the judiciary, uh, that would have meant uh, closing jury trials, shutting down jury trials, um, uh, our employees not having salaries, all of which would have had a corrosive effect on the institutional uh, independence. So I think those are the two components that I would focus on when I think about independence.